Hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome on this new video on Remnant from the Ashes. After a long time, the last one was before Christmas, we got a new update on this game and the first DLC, well, hopefully the first of many, <laughs> I don't know. Now, with this new update to the game, we're gonna find a lot of changes in a lot of items. Some of the weapons have been reworked, some of the armors have been rebalanced. Melee now is way more effective than it was before, according to what the dev says. And uh, all of these reworks and item changes, of course, they are gonna be for free. They're included in the, in the update for free while the actual Swamps of Corsos DLC, which you can buy separately, I think the cost is around uh, $10, something like that, will introduce survival mode, Corsos adventure mode, and new armor skins. Now, I know that many of you may be interested in what we're already saying about like armor skins, Corsos adventure mode, and so on. Corsus is now available to Adventure Mode. It wasn't previously, but now it is. If you buy the DLC, you will be able to select Corsus in your Adventure Mode uh, menu. When you go to the Big Crystal in War 13 and you select Adventure Mode, you can now select Corsus. There will be new items uh, related to Corsus biome, and there will be new dungeons and also enemies. On that note, also the campaign will receive an update. Corsus has always been the most, let's say, linear biome to go through, because there's just an handful of bosses and the dungeons are like pretty much all the same. But now it's gonna have more dungeons, different enemy types and new bosses. Now, Corsus update on campaign, it will be for free. It will happen regardless, but if you buy the DLC, you will also be able to play Corsus in Adventure Mode. Side note, on Corsus Rework, now the Butcher has an alternate kill, so we will be able to get an alternate weapon by killing it. Most likely it's Flail as a melee weapon that has been already discovered by data miners in the past. With the paid DLC will also come survival mode. What is survival mode? It's a new, it's an entirely new mode. When the players started in the labyrinth, inside the labyrinth, surrounded by these different obelisks vendors from which you can buy stuff. Now, as it says here, you will only have a pistol and an handful of scrap for starting your survival mode and you will have to spend uh, your scrap to get the first equipment from these obelisk vendors. Then you will jump into the first biome which is selected randomly and uh, once you clear that out, once you go through the entire biome, defeat bosses and kill the world boss, you will be able to return to the labyrinth and spend the scrap, the items that you got there uh, for buying more stuff from these obelisk vendors and then you go, off you go, on the next one. Now you will get a lot of items and it seems to be like a new sort of gameplay mechanics where you go through the biomes and uh, the more you kill, the more you earn. So uh, if, you, if you kill more bosses in that uh, area, in that specific biome in survival mode, when you go back to the labyrinth you will have more scrap as a reward. Also killing a boss in this mode will ultimately drop their mods and weapons, so it's gonna be easier for you to gear up at the start and go through the game. There will be no crafting in survival mode, so weapon upgrades won't be uh, an option. Players will level up through XP and will gain damage, health and stamina automatically. Last couple of things on survival mode, important, there are five unique account bounded rewards for survival mode. Once you unlock them, since they are account bounded, they're gonna be shared across all of your characters and all of the difficulty levels you can play through. So you can use them in any other mode, uh, pretty much like the rings that comes from nightmare mode, from killing the bosses in nightmare mode. Those are account bounded, so you can use them with any character you have. And as a final touch, for every boss you kill in survival mode, you will earn glowing frog, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Glo glowing fragments, a new currency for unlocking armor skin. That's very interesting, at least to me. I love armor skins and I can't wait to see what they did. Probably something that will profoundly disappoint me, but I leave this comment for another video. With this update comes as well a new difficulty level, which is Apocalypse. 
the dev says that apparently some people thought that Nightmare difficulty was too easy, so they gave us another tier of difficulty. This is gonna be even more difficult than Nightmare. Personally, I have no comments on this. Nightmare difficulty was challenging enough for me and I thought it was okay. But apparently some people were not thinking the same. Moving to the armor skins, oh, to obtain them, there will be a new vendor in War 13 and he trades armor skins for glowing fragments, the rewards that you can have in survival mode by defeating bosses. You can also obtain these fragments by killing boss in campaign on art or nightmare and of course apocalypse difficulties. The harder the difficulty, the more glowing fragments you can earn. Moving on to the rebalances and fixes. Now, the list is very long. There's a lot of performance balances, fixes, and a lot of um, changes for items, armor, and weapons. Of course, I'm not gonna go through this. I'm just gonna highlight the major points. I think they are more relevant. And then I'll leave you the link in the description so you can go and check it out for yourself. They did a lot of rework on a lot of the enemies, small touches here and there, but they are noticeable. Words of noting, Swamp Zombies in Corsus Realm, uh, they reduced HP from 150 to 95, so 55 HP reduction for the Swamp Zombies in Corsus, those, those guys were overwhelming because they one of them was eating a ton of ammo to go down at least the first time you visit Corsos with not upgraded weapons. Swamp Zombie Clawler would basically when you chop off their legs and they go on the floor they have another HP bar and then it's reduced from 100 to 70 now. Bosses! Now again here a lot of changes for a lot of different bosses like almost all of them. I'm gonna give you my favorite. I'm gonna give you like uh, highlights of what I think they're more important. Starting with Gorefist, very friendly boss. We, uh, <laughs> uh, for for every game beginner, you will find it in the first boss. Now, um, instead of spawning a random uh, number of his uh, lovely spore friendly guys, you know those those things that comes at you and then blow up in your face. They adjusted the behavior to make it a little bit more predictable. In instead of spawning two or three uh, randomly every now and then, now it spawns two initially and then two after each delay. Now it spawns them only when it makes, when it uses Mantle of Thorns, its mod. Skaldens here, the guy with the crossbow and the fire dragon, he received quite a few balances, but the most notable is definitely the crossbow projected damage reduced by 80%. That's a lot. So big nerf for that guy. Personally, I never had too much of an issue with that fight. I think it's fairly easy, but uh, apparently it was making too much of a damage, so they nerfed it. Cranker, this was very much needed in Corsus. There was a random chance that the guy would spawn an elite enemy. Now, not just a regular elite, one of those that when it goes down, you need to keep shooting at it until it's dead, otherwise it comes back. That was very annoying. Now they removed the random chance so the guy shouldn't spawn in anymore. Or removing the random chance means that the guy will spawn anytime. It's not random anymore though. The unclean one, the butcher in uh, Corsus, removed weak spots on the head and replaced it with armor, reduced overall health to compensate for removal of the head weak spot. There is, and they added the alternate kill. We need to figure that out. I'm sure somebody already did it by the time this video goes out. <laughs> Friendly fire damage has been added, and this thing is huge. So we have friendly fire damage on hard mode 25 to 50% has been increased. Increased friendly fire damage on nightmare 25 to 75% and set friendly fire on apocalypse to 100%. So if you shoot in the head your friend in apocalypse mode, it's dead. Can't wait for the trolls. For weapons, we're gonna go through the most relevant all of them across the board with minor changes to someone. Uh, but some of the most important are Magnum Revolver reduces boss fire spread 6 to 4, uh, increased recoil recovery 
from 0.4 seconds to 0.2 seconds so it's gonna be faster increase damage from 63 to 65 nice two point bonus damage increase reload speed by 20 percent 25 percent that's a huge boost to the magnum revolver reducing firing sound radius from 50 to 45 meters so that's uh, overall a lot uh, it's a good buff this is a buff that was needed because the revolver is a very strong gun but it was always put in the shadows by the hunting pistol which has not been touched almost they they just increased the weak spot modifier by 10 percent and reduced the firing sound radius shotgun reload speed by 10 percent interested and fire rate by 10 percent increased again very nice crossbow now is much more viable as a stealth weapon went through quite a rework but the most notable things are reduce ideal range from 30 to 18 meters so you need to be closer to eat your target however fighting wounds alerts unaware enemies so it is now a much more interesting weapon now the beam rifle got a damage increase increased weapon capacity 30 to 50 increased total capacity 180 to 200 increased base damage 30 to 20 but it also reduced fire rate 5 to 4 reduced ramp up increment 0 0.4 to 0 0.3 reduced idea range from 20 to 15 what that means is that to be used as effectively as before now you need to be closer and the damage you dish out it will not ramp up too much because the base damage is already higher than it was before so to to compensate that the ramping up of the damage it will be less you will still be able to do more damage by keeping the enemy under constant fire but that increment it will be lower than in the past there's been a, a quite a few tweaks on the Spitfire as well, but the most importantly, uh, the Flame Trailer mod has been re reduced the power requirements 30 to 24. So every 24 damage you get a uh, charge. Increase total charges from 25 to 50, so you're gonna be able to fire it for more, and reduce firing sound from 20 to 10 meters. The Filer, one of my favorite weapons. They did reduce the charges from 5 to 3, so big nerf on that regards, you're gonna be dish out much less damage. But they reduced the mod power requirement from 300 for one charge to 250, so at least you're gonna be firing more often. You, you're just not gonna be able to stock it up. Moving to mods, we have Hunter Marks reduced power requirement from 1000 to 500, but they have the duration as well. So now this doesn't seem a game-changing mechanic because having uh, both the requirements and the duration it will set the use of this mod to be the same as it was before but it's not because now you need to be able to charge it once it expires in order to casting it again. It's a nerf not that big because now you don't have to charge it for the full 1000 points but it's still a nerf. Mantle of Thorns, they increase the melee damage reduction, which is nice. Flicker Clock, now this has been uh, gone through huge nerf. Uh, they increase the power requirements, they reduce max shield percentage from 150 to 100, and then they reduced the duration from 60 seconds to only 10 seconds. Now you can basically take it and pin it away. <laughs> Ignores passing impact, but not the damage, so that means that you can cast it while being targeted by enemies it's it's basically a, a saving your ass mod <laughs> you you cast it you run away you heal it's done 10 seconds gone swarm uh, re received a small nerf reduced duration and increased in power requirements by 250 which is quite a bit if you ask me uh, but they also fixed a bunch of bugs with the mod itself now on the armor section there are a lot of changes, it's probably the section that has been changed the most. So once again we're gonna go through the major points, the most important, and we start off with Adventure Goggles. Now we have a set piece for the Adventure Armor set. Akari Armor sets has been buffed, they removed the single perk 50% crit that required a perfect dodge, instead they added an evade wind of increase of 2 iframes. Uh, with a single item on, so big buff for the Akari armor sets. Now, Void Armor, I know many of you have been curious about this one, they did uh, quite a few works on it. They did remove the slight evade window that the power transfer single perk was giving you, but they added 30% standing 
aim moving speed, which is more accurate, because the void is an every armor set you shouldn't technically dodge with it. Uh, so having an evade window bonus was not like the thematically correct with the armor. They increased the stacks from 3 to 5, so you're gonna stay in the offensive or defensive mode for longer, but also they did decrease the set bonus power transfers from 30% to 25% and they reduce the, the stacks so instead of going 10, 20, 30% uh, with each stack instead you have 5 stack and you go 5% per stack so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 for the trinkets, a lot of changes here as well. The most notable, Gunslinger Charm has been increased in fire rate from 10 to 15% and they reduced the, low, the reload speed from 25 to 20%. Pocket Watch now increased stamina cost reduction to 20 and increased stamina regen to 20. I guess it's 20%, but they didn't put it here, not sure. Soul Anchor increased duration 50 to 100%, so it actually doubles the duration of your summons now. Enjoy! Storm Amulet now only affects shock damage, so you cannot pair it up with the beam rifle anymore. Sorry guys. Empowering Loop now reduced damage buff from 30% to 25% and reduced 5 rate penalty from 20 to 15%, so you can pair it up with the Gunslinger Charm again and you will work out as before. It's been just slightly nerfed a bit. For trait. The most notable has been huge nerf on the Kingslayer trait from 50% damage, crit damage boost to only 25%, so it's been alt. And finally, on my highlights, in War 13, Ace will now be able to convert your higher tier iron into lower tier iron because at high levels it, it was very difficult to find low tier um, materials. And that was it for today's video, uh, these have been, have been my highlights, but again, uh, the full list will be in the official Remnant news page on their website, I will leave the link in the description below. I will put uh, soon a new video on me going through the updates and the Swamp Corsus DLC, if you wanna check that out, I will be much obliged to you. Thank you very much for watching this video, if you liked it, please leave a like down below, it helps the channel and it keeps my motivation going, and as always, I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, guns out.